You are watching the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. G'day. How you going? Um, I'm going just swelling. How about you? Well, swelling? I don't yeah, know if that's really a word, but uh, swimmingly is, is what I was going for. <laughs> Swellingly, swimmingly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, go your right. Um, uh, n- nothing really to report here. Um, everything is okay. Uh, and and over here stateside, we just had our uh, Thanksgiving. I uh, hope everybody uh, had their filling of stuffing and turkey and pumpkin pie. And uh, I know you did, Chris. Yeah, I, I had <laughs> I had minor portions of turkey and a big old wedge of pumpkin pie because that's yeah, that's yeah. Thanksgiving for me. <laughs> <laughs> your your main course was indeed the pumpkin pie. When actually, you could probably say it was. Um, I had pumpkin pie with my whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. Yep. Because I make sure that you can't see pie. You just see whipped cream, and then you discover that there's pie underneath it. So it's like, it's the mystery revealed. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, yesterday was the Black Friday that wasn't. Because yeah, it was the Black Friday that's all virtual. Yeah, um, which yeah. hey, I think that's a win. <laughs> I, I, the totally. fact that you don't have to go anywhere and you can still get the deals. It's, it's awesome. That that's going to be like the new normal now, and that's a good new normal to have, right? Well, absolutely, because I don't understand. Mm. I've never understood the appeal of going into a scrum to find you know four dollar DVDs. Um, no, that's this, this not literally appealing. zero appeal. Yeah. No. Um, you see, it's funny. Like, when I see all the Black Friday madness going on over there in the US, I have to remember that Thanksgiving over there is pretty much like our Boxing Day here. So, the 26th of December here. Um, that's when all the stores reopen again and people, because they've been locked away for like literally one day, <laughs> they go they go stir crazy and they have to get out and they have to go uh, en masse to the major shopping centers and buy up all the stuff that's literally just been marked up. So it looks like it's discounted. Yes. Like, that's, that's how they do it. Like, Well, my, my favorite thing is that the TVs that everybody goes, oh my God, look at how cheap this TV is for. They, those TVs are literally only manufactured for Black Friday. Oh, really? Because if you look at their serial numbers, as soon as Black Friday is gone, you'll never see that serial number again. And prior to Black Friday, you never saw that serial number either. They literally... Really? It's... it's screens that are made by the various companies specifically to sell them back Black Friday for a song. And if I know anything about uh, how they make flat panel TVs these days, there is this gigantic panel. And from Mm. that, they go, okay, from this, we're going to cut, uh, you know, six uh, 75-inch TVs and you know, 16, 40 inch TV or whatever, but they, they basically Tetris the entire panel and do that cut. And so depending on what the largest sizes that people are, are interested in, that determines the sizes of all the smaller TVs. That's why you no longer see certain size TVs because oh, it doesn't fit into the, the pattern of doing the cut. And then from there, hey, okay. they check the panels and see what the quality is and based on how good that quality is of that particular panel cut, oh, okay, that gets kicked up into the the expensive one. And this one has, it's not quite as, they're all being cut from the same panel, but obviously certain sections of the panel don't have as, as strong of quality. And so, oh, really, yeah. And so huh. all the lower quality panels, those get set aside. And yeah. guess what they get packaged into? Friday. They get packaged into your Black Friday TV. <laughs> there you go. I never realized that. I wonder if that's the same for um, the the Boxing Day sales here. Probably. It's, pro- probably. Yeah. And then you think you about, well, you know where Arcade One Up is getting all their monitors from. Yeah, well, because all their it'll... monitors are literally five years, five years plus old. Yeah. And they're buying those things in bulk, basically from these leftovers of these cuttings. Mm. Um, so these have been in storage for ages, and you know, 
There's, there's nothing particularly wrong with them. They're just a no. different grade of monitor. And you don't need a fantastic resolution monitor for the games that you're playing on them. Like, but where's it gonna where it's going to become interesting is they have a lot of four by three monitors. Mm. And eventually those are gonna run out and all you're gonna be left with is the leftover remains of sixteen by nine monitors. Yeah. So what is what are they going to have to do cabinet wise? Are they just never going to then be able to produce or are they going to have to buy large 16 by nines and mat off those areas to preserve the four by three, you know, it's. Well, you see plenty of, um, of, you know, converted arcade cabinets with a Pandora's box system in them these days. And they're all 16 by nine screens because that's what you can get. Yeah. And it looks perfectly fine. Um, I think what we, what they end up doing is just letterboxing the content on the screen itself. Um, or just marquee it, like putting a fake digital That's what I'm thinking, they mask it off. Yeah, and that, that looks actually really good. Yeah. So I don't but think so, that'd be a problem So that's why everybody was complaining about what the Wave 1 cabinets, so things like, like I mean, like you know, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and since then, they've been manufacturing these things still, like the, especially the Mortal Kombat, and everybody commented about how the Mortal Kombat screen, the colors are better now. Mm. And then they look on the back and they compare the serial numbers and they go, oh, yeah, because this monitor is from two years after this other one. <laughs> and that's yep. why the technology got a little bit better. So, And this is, you know, an argument for as much as it would probably kill everyone that I'm going to say this is to actually kind of wait for the second <laughs> round of these pinball cabinets because... It's going to be the same thing. Like they're going to, they produced and spec'd out these cabinets in a year that's unprecedented. And, you know, when supply and everything starts ramping up again and the availability of monitor types actually start ramping up again, they're going to be choosing ones that are probably going to be cheaper but better um, when they're actually doing their um, bill of materials for the cabinets. So, like, here's, if you buy now. Here's yeah. the thing with the wait and see approach hmm. this is what has me worried. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't think that we were going to talk anything about Arcade One Up today, and here we are. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I think it makes sense to do so. Um, Arcade One Up kind of is approaching their marketplace as these are collectibles, and I heard John mm. I, John D referred to it as such, and I started mm. thinking about it as, oh yeah, this is you buying collectible cups, and yes. You bought Very the first expensive ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but you you're going and you're buying the collectible cup. So yes, you got this original Pac-Man cup. And then, you know, the following year, hey, it's the return of the collectible cups. And hey, it's another Pac-Man cup. It's different than the first yeah. one that you had. But if you're a collector, you need both of them. And Yeah, you do need. You need both of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so but the thing is, is that they're not necessarily making that original cup. And I think that's also with Arcade 1-Up, there are certain cabs that just have never been produced again. They're gone. And people mm. are now clamoring for those because they're like, oh, shoot, I thought that those would be available just at any given time. And Arcade 1-Up's like, no, we're done. We, we're, we're done making that cabinet. Um, but on the flip side... Then they've gone and started making 12-in-1 cabinets rather than the 4-in-1 or 3-in-1 cabinets of a lot of those titles that are no longer available on that other cabinet. So it, it is kind of this do you wait and see because you're taking a gamble of it just plain not being available at all mm -hmm. down the line or is it going to be available down the line and even better? We don't know because this is the absolute first wave of these cabs. Yeah. I think you could... The only way you can make a... I guess a guess would be to see how well they're selling. And well, I mean, I think we all know that they're going to sell really well, according, I mean, yeah. based off of pre sale numbers where they're selling out like that. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're literally vaporware at the moment. So you, you can't buy one. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'd, I'd say based on that strength, you're going to see another wave. And I mean, all, all things are basically pointing towards the fact that they will be doing a V2. Because uh, even even Mel is sort of suggesting of future proofing towards V two now, so sure. or like you know so. But then the question know. becomes: Hey, is that V two? 
you know, here's version two of the Marvel cabinet, but it's got the remaining Marvel tables, not the original Marvel tables. And no, you're still not able to, uh, you know, add on tables. Now you're going, mm. oh, I should yeah. have gotten the, you know, that's that's yeah. the big if. Yeah, shoulda, woulda, coulda is always hard, isn't mm-hmm. it? And I think there, that's a nice dovetail here. Well, let's talk about. To, to talk about. I was what? gonna say, let's talk about the Legend of Pinball. We're gonna do a lot of that today. Um, well, we need to talk about one more thing. Oh, what's um, that? For RK One Up, and that is that uh, we actually have now seen RK One Up product down here in Australia. Um, oh, that's right. So, yeah, Jared so, went shopping at Costco. Mm, I did. I went into Costco and then, you know, they've got the big Christmas area in Costco um, at the moment. I walked up in there and lo and behold, there was a Super Pac-Man cabinet from Arcade One Up standing there with about seven others on the pallet, all set up. And it was getting a fair bit of attention um, from people walking past. I mean, this is this is the curb appeal of these cabinets, right? So before, Everyone... you, before you reveal the price... <clears throat> Mm, I'm not going to reveal it yet. Okay. We're going to talk, talk about more. Yeah, okay, okay. But I just, I, I want to make sure that we'll go there, but we're going to have to prime our audience in terms of uh, what Australian dollars are to American dollars uh, before yeah, we, we get into we that. Do. But, okay, can, continue with your uh, your magical mystery palette. Mm, the magical mystery palette. So um, it looked like the palette had about 10 um, originally on it, but um, it was down to seven plus the one that was actually set up. So... The, I talked to the guys at Costco and they said that, look, they, they were not aware that this was coming until two weeks prior. So I, I said, hey, this is cool. This arcade one up's cool. So when are the pinballs coming? Of course, I'd ask that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they said, look, we we don't even know. We were surprised that we were even getting these. Um, so, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting to sort of see how, from the, the backside of things, how it was actually sort of told to the the, the store um, very much a surprise so obviously this big container load of them have has arrived on Australian shores and it's now been farmed out to a couple of different companies so Costco have got a, an allocation uh, another company here called Harvey Norman which is a um, sort of like a department store style um, they sell white goods and stuff like that um, they got an allocation but they also got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cabinets okay um, now, um, I won't say the price of those yet, but they are at a different price yes. that uh, the, the little single cabinets are because I've got four controls on them, which is to be expected. Um, and then there's a couple of online re- retailers, like one's called The Gamesman, who are selling them um, for what it seems to be a little bit even cheaper than Costco. So there's a little bit of margin in these from what I can see, and it does seem to pay the shop around, even in Australia. Um, so... Yeah, I was. Uh, it's funny, you know. I was standing beside it, and people were going, "Oh, look at this cabinet." Gee, I wonder if you can use it in like paid mode. And I quickly said, "Yeah, nah, you can't." <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like, folks. Let me give a little uh, dissertation here. Better yet, why don't you tune in to our podcast? Oh, um... <laughs> I should have just slapped a black eyed logo on it and said, "Tune in for more information." <laughs> but yeah, I was I was totally doing the sales pitch on it. Um, and you know, I so, say, you know, you know, they got really quality, good quality. This is arcade hardware they've got here, and you know, they're actually proper buttons you see in the arcade. And but these are definitely home use only. You can't wire them up for an arcade, no. um, for arcade use. Um, so you know, that, I think one person was looking at it for like the waiting room of their doctor surgery, which sure. is a perfect use for it. Yeah, I, that's great where, use. honestly, that's where I first put hands on any of these arcade one up units. I was mm. getting an oil change, and the automotive place that I went to, their waiting room, he had three arcade one-up cabs set up, and I That's was like, awesome, "What man. a great time killer!" <laughs> yeah, it's great. You, you, if you wouldn't want to leave, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the next so, time I went, yeah. the next time I went in there, which was about a year later, he had two more, <laughs> and mm. then I said, "You know, they're coming out with pinball," and he was like, "Oh." Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jared, was your reaction uh, with seeing these things in Costco the same as my reaction? Because I don't frequent the Walmart, so I never have seen them in the Walmart, but I frequent mm. Costco on a weekly basis, and I'm wandering mm. there on the aisles of Costco, and and right there on the corner of the aisle was uh, an NBA jam, and I just went, mm. ooh, ooh. Yep. <laughs> pretty lined over <laughs> pretty much yeah I went uh 
<laughs> like that. I was wide eyed. And then of course my, the my of course my eyes dart straight to the price. I'm like, come on, Costco uh, discounts. And it wasn't really uh, uh different. I think the only thing was that they were offering it with a stool, I think. A stool. Or or no, excuse me, excuse me. They weren't offering it with a stool. They were offering it with it had a topper and lighting on the back. That's the right. Costco right. difference. That's the Costco difference. <laughs> And the Super okay. Pac-Man is actually only available at Costco. <clears throat> oh, is that right? So yes. that's not the case with this. So when we're referring to Super Pac-Man, we're referring to the cabinet that has about six versions of Pac-Man plus Galaga on it, right? Is that <laughs> Wait, say that again? Galaga. Interesting. See, we all call mm. it Galaga. Galaga. Not like Galaga. 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 And then it's Galaxian. Galaxian. Or do you say well, Galaxian? No, we don't. it's Galaxian. Okay, so it's Galaga. Galaga. I don't know. Okay, here's a here's a so, tangent. I've got quick. the price. Hold on, hold on. Tangent, on real phone. quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you pronounce the name of the shoe that has three stripes on it? Well, it used to be Adidas, but then we got Americanized and it's now Adidas. Hooray! <laughs> but it used to be Adi- everyone used to call them Adidas down here. See, we never did because, you know, there was a little band called Run DMC that had a song called Yeah, My that's Adidas. exactly how we learned how to say it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally how we learned how to say it right, yeah. yeah. So, so the first time I ever heard anybody, and this was just like maybe, I don't know, 15 years ago, say Adidas, I was like, what the heck are you talking about? Quit being what a prick. What brand is that? <laughs> <laughs> Quit being a prick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm to- I am totally that. So <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> pricing. Here in America, okay. the Super Pac-Man table is three hundred ninety-nine dollars at Costco. Jared, how much is it in Australia? It is. You won't be able to see this, but it is seven hundred and ninety-nine. Well, seven hundred and forty-nine at the moment. Seven forty-nine. And, and then it's going to be seven. Oh no, six ninety-nine ninety-nine is the introductory price. That's the introductory price, and. It's going to be price after offer is seven hundred and eighty nine. Wait, what, I don't understand what the what what do you mean introductory price? So the intro because they're brand new and okay. they've never carried the line before. They have this thing called introductory price at Costco. At Costco, yeah. Okay. So it's six ninety nine ninety nine. So so seven hundred bucks. Okay, so seven hundred versus our uh, four hundred. Um, yeah. What is the convert the the Australian dollar conversion rate? currently it is about 73 cents to the greenback okay so there's how you see not only the conversion price but also the markup for shipping it in to australia yeah. so the problem with australia is that they have rather stiff duties on imports so i found this out when i was thinking of importing a whole lot of pascal boards for the gottlieb machines yeah um <clears throat> and I, I did the full price up i got a quote for shipping and it adds about half again on onto the cost of the um the total order so it's a big hit um with the import duty so that price reflects both the exchange rate and the import duty and there's not a lot of wiggle room in that price left over so what was the uh, mutant Tur- ninja turtles because that's a uh, hundred bucks more here it's a uh, 4.99 it was selling for 1200 yeah 1200 dollars for that now i've seen some some actual official, what they call leisure and allied industries turtle cabs down here, which were like a dime a dozen, um, very recently with a Pandora's box, you know, two thousand and one game system selling for about that price down here. Wow, on on, on Gumtree or like you know Craigslist. So, because that's that the thing, is... you better really <clears throat> love Ninja Turtles because it's only two titles on that cab. Is it literally two titles? Yes. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. Sign, don't sign me one up for that. <laughs> um, that's the no, only no reason good. why I would buy that cab is to mod it, <laughs> to put, to strip it, to gut it, and put a computer in, and then I can have yeah. my four four controllers so that you know, you can play yeah. that and Gauntlet properly. <laughs> yeah, but do you, and NBA Jam as well. Yes, yeah, you know, unofficially. <laughs> yeah, um, but that's a lot of money. Yeah, um, and this is my fear. Like you know, when I said a couple of shows ago that I think down here, the machines like the one up pinball machines are going to be around eight or nine hundred dollars. I'm adjusting that now. I think they're going to be about one thousand three hundred at least. 
based on this. Wow. I, I don't think I don't think they can do it for anything else because if you look at the extra costs of the turtles cabinets with the four controllers mm -hmm. um, and the larger cabinet side, like there's a lot more wood on the pinball cabinet. There's more hardware, like there's two monitors and a whole lot of other gear in there as well. Like, well, I'm just a... thinking, just I mean, price point alone. Here they're going for they're going to be 550, so yeah. that's 50 bucks more than the turtles cabinet. So yeah, do so the math like... on your end. Do the math, like it's going to be at least one thousand three hundred. I think probably you might be able to get them for that through Costco, but yeah. the what the, the one thousand two hundred dollar price was through Harvey Norman, and they're always more expensive than Costco. Okay. So they were selling the Pac Man through um, Harvey Norman for about nine hundred and ninety nine, I think. Okay. So there's some you got a pretty deep pockets if you want to get into arcade one up down here. Um. So that's that where it's going to become, it's going to have to become economy of scale. They're going to first have to get a base that prove, they have to prove that these things sell. And then mm -hmm. the retailers might actually purchase more so that the price can be a little bit lower. Yes. That's what they're going to, and that's exactly what the shipment's for. It's yeah. a proving shipment yeah. um, to work out, you know, whether there's an appetite for this product at this price yeah. down here. Okay. So there you go. There we go. That's enough arcade one up talk for today. <laughs> Because again, I didn't think we were going to talk anything about it, but there you are. Mm. Let's talk about what I thought that we were going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Legend Spinball. So last time we already talked about the uh, redesign aspect and mm. everything that went into that. No sooner do we record that than about two days later, all of a sudden there is a new announcement. That new mm. announcement is that they are going to have Zacharia Pinball on their cabinet sometime in 2021, probably the uh, second quarter, so spring of 2021. Yep. What do you make of that, Jared? Uh, good. Like, I, I think it's great that Zacharia Pinball is going to be on this product. Um, I think it's probably a better home for it. I think it's a much better home for Zachary of Pinball. Right. <laughs> um, I even tweeted yeah. out when, when Well Played was first announced, I tweeted out to Zachary. I that saw it. I said, happy you're, out, you're entering the fray. Wish it was on a better machine. <laughs> yep. Exactly. So now they're on a better, now they're on a much better machine than what that Well Played much one better. is. And that just kind of went into, we were saying that was Well Played Dead on arrival, and Jared had said yes, and now I can definitively go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Although, you know, uh, there is some opinion out there that, you know, there's a there's a product for everyone. So maybe if you don't want to spend the extra, you know, two or $300, I think it's about that sort of difference. So on... the, oh, between the cabs? Uh, yeah. At games is $100 more than well played. Now, also, though, figure this uh, at games, you're going to have to purchase these tables. Yes. So they are. there's the 27 tables that are built into Well Played. I mean, you're talking literally that's going to be a $30 cost. So, mm. again, it's negligible. If you yeah. really want to play the Zachary at Pinball, your best bet's going to be to do the Ad Games cab Legends oh, Pinball cabinet. It is. Unless you're really short in cash and you can only afford the smaller cabinet. But honestly, you, you'd want to save your money and just you can just get ready for the uh, the pinball cabinet, really. The Ad Games one. Yeah, I would love to know, uh, as usual, information scarce. <laughs> um, other than the announcement. And, and the announcement, everybody's saying that it's 105 plus tables. Mm -hmm. By my math... It's 106 tables. You're not going to be getting the deluxe tables. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be the Solid State, the EMs, the remakes, the retro, the retro. and then the award tables. For those of you wondering what the award tables uh, yeah. are, the award tables are not Zacharia tables at all. They're not based on Zacharia tables. These are tables that Magic Pixel had made for a mobile app, and they have converted and put into the Zacharia pinball program. Um, so it's kind of, you might in a way say it was the precursor to the remakes mm, um, using yeah. all their own licensing or not licensing, but their own themes. 
themes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be 105 tables plus the 22 Gottliebs um, that you're going to have. So I mean, that makes an impressive library. Yeah. Going into that. And these ones are all locally installed as well. So yeah. So the you don't need to stream them. No, and and I just found out today that basically because I was like, wow, how big of a memory does does this have? Uh, not not enough. Pinball? Not enough. <laughs> not what it is is enough. you're going to have to have a a, a thumb drive. And yeah. you're gonna... So those slots that we were referring to, the, the poor placement of slots, that's what's going to be in one of your slots if you want Zachary a pinball. It's going to be a thumb drive. Yeah. In fact, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, I think the, I was going to say the VPX ones, but no, they're they're not, um, because they're going to be streamed. So yeah, it's really the two. You, you've, it's getting to the point where you almost need to have the. Um, the mountable thumb drive system as the primary place that you're storing all these titles. Mm -hmm. It's going to, I think, moving forward, they might even move away from the onboard storage on the boards and just run it all from the thumb drive because it's going to be, it's going to be a lot easier to manage updates to tables if you just unplug the thumb drive, plug it into your PC, uh, you know, update it, plug it back in again, etc. Um, the interesting thing though is that you know. If you're getting one of these things, I don't know, maybe the market is different for app games where if, you know, if you've got an app games table, you need to expect that you will have to have some sort of computer, which is, I guess, a fair expectation these days, but um, to actually manage your games. And I have a feeling that, that the games. at games customer is very much that <laughs> customer that's going to have a computer. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. At Games is a very different market to something like, for example, Arcade 1-Up, who just want to literally turn the thing on and play it. Yeah, um, you're targeting... A, the, the At Games market seems to me a, a open-source community. Savvy. Yeah, you know, very much. DIY community, that that sort, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're used to screwing around with USB drives. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they'll be fine. Um. So the, I'm just saying that though, more as a warning for others. If if that's not your game, then this is not your platform. Right. So the the question though that I have, uh, Zachary of Pinball has cabinet mode built in. Um, yes. To their game, you also have the ability to have a second screen. Um, unlike Pinball FX three, which you have to go find your own screen. Which watch last episode and uh, download where all my screens are. Um, <laughs> They actually offer technically animated backlash. Um, they have it. Scores mm. are built in to where they need to be built in. Lights are going on the backlash. Um, it's not the highest res quality, but uh, it works. It functions just fine. So, but that's PC. These are yeah. Android design builds. So, is that second monitor going to be used or? For Zachariah Pinball, or is it going to be just again like what's on Weld Played, where the DMD is going to be baked onto your playfield? I've got a feeling that, considering that the press announcement was literally signed um, like a week or two ago, um, the deal, um, I think that they're probably going to put in the extra effort to make it better integrated with the with the platform, because I think early expectations are this isn't going to be out until quarter to 2021. Um, so they're, they're certainly not available now. Um, so I would think that they, they're going to do a little bit of engineering work to make this work properly on that games. Be interesting to see. Mm. Definitely. Cause I mean, I hope that that's the case. Um, it's a, it's a golden expect... opportunity for them to do it. Yeah. It, if I was buying them on that games, I would expect that back glass in integration to be done well. Yeah. Um, even if it was just the scores up there, look, I, I'd be okay with just having the scores as the single display at the back, but you know, would what would be better, of course, is the full back glass display. And if they can do animated, then that's pretty good. I think if they're going to do animated up there, they're going to need to sacrifice graphics quality on the main play field, though, because they're going to run out of resources on those the at game system. So, if you happen to know the answer to this, anybody. <laughs> feel free to comment and let us know because um, yeah. I'm I'm definitely curious and, and again this information may not even be uh, available, available yet. yet in which case mm. we would say those that uh, have conversations with that games 
maybe recommend that. <laughs> yeah, if you've got an inside line to them, uh, please, please do strongly recommend that they do this because it will be a really great reflection of their product on the App Games platform. Exactly. Um, I've noticed, because they have also were announcing that all these are going to be playable on not just the Legends Pinball Cabinet, but also the uh, Legends Gaming and Legends Arcade Cabinets. Mm, but yes. on those cabinets, they're only going to be running 720p at 30 frames a second. Now we're back into that mm. whole argument of... Do you really want to play pinball at 30 frames a second? No. So, <laughs> in short, no. But what I what I think I've seen is that on a lot of these builds, when you're playing pinball at 30 frames a second, what that results in is a slower ball. Not necessarily a janky ball, but a slower ball. So the table feels really floaty. This is certainly what we saw in the toy shop cabinets when they released at 30 frames per second. Um, everything felt really floaty and really sort of you know, like, like a very, very flat early 80s got leap. That wasn't um, just Farsight? <laughs> well, I mean, come on. There is, there is a precedent there. But the reason why I'm saying that that seems to be the case is because when the version 1.2 and 1.3 boards came out with um, uh, from uh, from Toy Shock, you, that problem was eliminated. So then they were running at 60 frames per second. So I think... If they're running at 30, expect the ball to be slow. I'm just um, I'm kind of kind of confused as to why this is the case. Um because the Legends Arcade, I assume their monitor is a 1080 monitor, and mm. your controls are connected directly to that. So why can it not transfer at 60 frames? I don't know. It, that seems a little weird it might to be, me i think it'll be the um the actual hardware system they're using in those boxes um is just not capable of pushing the frame rates that high because remember those those cabinets were designed for like retro style games yes and and not pinball so they, they're available on this now they've been allowed to you know be loaded on but i'm not super confident that the hardware was ever designed to run a pinball like experience on them so i mean i guess the I nice thing is where... that because this is all part of the ad games ecosystem that if yeah if you only have a legends gaming pad right now and you bought the pinball and then one day upgrade to a legends pinball well it's going to still work you're not gonna have to rebuy a second time so that's right and that's a really big advantage yeah. for if you if you like the App Games Network and you like the ecosystem, um, it's essentially like a it's a custom version of Steam, really, but not Steam because it's not a PC. It's like a custom storefront yeah. where all your purchases carry over between products, and you know that's that's a very big attraction for this platform. It's the way they've actually done their ecosystem. They've I think they've had a fair few years to perfect it, and it sort of shows the pedigree is definitely there. And then the key thing with this too is so long as you're subscribed to their uh, arcade net, mm. um, all these, all these Zacharia titles, all the Farsight titles um, are going to also be available for their leaderboards mm -hmm. and for their tournaments that they run. Mm. Um, so that'll be that'll be key because I mean, and again, as a Steam player, tournaments are fun. That's oh, lots of fun. Uh, with with Pinball FX three. Oh, that that literally within the week of first getting FX three, you know, I'd been obviously diehard playing Pinball Arcade. As soon as I saw tournaments were available, it was like boom, gone TPA. You've lost yep. all interest to me. These tournaments are the thing. <laughs> yeah competitive play on pinball oh yeah you know it's 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 key. it's what you need and you know like you know as a very quick aside you know um ifpa have now essentially wound up operations um so you know this ability for their for particularly folks in america to actually have competitive pinball i think it's going to be moving very heavily online um and over certainly over 2021 you're going to see a big jump in people wanting to play pinball competitively online. Well, just look at what happened with um, the the Guns N' Roses machine from Jersey Jack Pinball. 
it's mm. shipping with Scorbit built into it. Scorbit, Scorbit, for those that don't know, that's the uh, it's a chip that can be applied to any pinball machine um, that creates worldwide leaderboards. And it basically makes a connected pin. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's an incredible bit of technology, and they built it in to Jersey Jacks now. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. and this is even something that uh, Mel said was the appeal of these uh, full-size units that they were going to be putting into Dave & Buster's. The Dave & Buster's builds, Because yeah. those would be also leaderboards across all of those. Dave & Buster's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, very cool. This is the this is the big question. When will Stern embrace this? Because if Stern embraces it, then it's, that's official. It's on. It's, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Stern, I think Jersey Jack had done a very, very sensible thing here, partnering with Scorbit. Um, I think it's um, it's basically they are the front runners here now uh, for tournament play, uh, connected tournament play, because this makes it so much easier for tournament directors um, to actually run virtual tournaments yeah. um, everywhere. So yeah. there we go again with reasons why you would want and at games cabinet, um, they're not making these collectible. This is no. This is this the is cabinet a... that you're going yeah. to own, um, and they're going to make sure that you have content for this cabinet. Um, you know, again, you're going to have the 22 Gottlieb tables. You're going to have now 106 uh, Zachariah tables, um, possibly more if the deluxe tables wind up being put mm -hmm. on. Uh, then you're going to have the VPX customs. Well, you're going to have the Tato cut tables that are going to be yep. being made, and then and this is going to shift into our next uh, kind of uh, thing. Yeah, VPX on the Legends pinball. Mm -hmm. How does that work exactly? I think you said something about streaming, Jared, but I, I'm not in the mm. loop on this. So tell yeah. me what you know. So from what I've seen on the forums, because uh, there's been a fair bit of information floating around there recently, is that the VPX tables, due to the license of Visual Pinball X, um, does not allow um, the the product to be installed on a commercial machine. Um, so these tables, and also because Virtual Pinball is very much a Windows-centric product, um, it doesn't have the libraries that's needed to run on the at games system, which is sort of like a hybrid Android from what I understand. So therefore the only option for these VPX tables designed by community members um, is to stream uh, through the, um, the arcade net system. So um, that's going to be an interesting experience. So I wonder then, I'm assuming that these tables are going to be part of your admission price, you might say, to ArcadeNet. That you're not going to have to buy these tables because... I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's going to be if you're paying your money for ArcadeNet on a monthly basis, a you're perk. going to have access to these hmm. tables just like you're going to have access to the the library of uh, games that they have on the cloud. That's right. The, the typical it's essentially library. a perk. It's, it's another reason why you'd want to go and, and get that membership if you want to access these tables. So from what I understand, the tables such as the Leprechaun King, and um, there's another one called, I think it's called Pizza Time. Yeah, Pizza Time. That's the one that uh, there was a trailer yeah. for. Yeah, so those two tables have been designed by some of the leading VPX um, development teams, and they've been sponsored by At Games, um, according to the press release that was released recently um so it when spon when when i hear the word sponsored by that says to me that at games paid them to build them but the thing is that they've also made them available free of charge to the vpx community as well so developed for their platform but also to give back to the open source community they've made them available um to the vpx community at large so because these are going to be streaming um that means, and like you said, that this is running on a hybrid Android platform. Uh, mm -hmm. Those that are interested in thinking that, oh, well, I'll have the entire vast library that is unavailable on VPX. Why would I possibly need another, uh, you know, a different cab when I can just download? That's not going to be the case because it's going no. to your your 
choice is only what's going to be available on arcade net it's not that you being able to bring right. in whatever you want no that's right you can't for example download uh the table the table assets and load them somehow onto the at game system from what i've seen so far in the in the press releases because you need to have that vpx system available on the system to do that locally um so you will be accessing any vpx content will be accessed directly through um the online system so you pointed out to me uh, a conversation that was questioning whether at games even has uh, the ability to stream VPX. Uh, why don't you delve yeah. in a little bit to that? Yeah, so there was a, a discussion in one of the at games forums on Facebook that um, one of the community members was concerned um, in, in a rather accusationary tone that um, you know, arcade, not arcade one up, um, at games was doing the dodgy on this and you know there's there's some there was uh, uh accusations being th- flung around that you know oh you know at games hadn't paid for the use and it was breaching the license agreement for uh visual pinball that you know it's a non-commercial product and it was being used in a commercial setting so you know i with well with our lawyers with our fake lawyers hats well and truly affixed to our heads yes uh, uh went, this would be jared and chris esquire uh <laughs> Jared and Chris, hacklegalteam.com, um, <laughs> best prices available. Um, what I did is I started. Jared and Chris around. got me $8.1 million. Oh. <laughs> $8.1 1 million internet dollars. Um, so. <laughs> Not Bitcoin. <laughs> internet <laughs> bucks. <laughs> internet dollary dudes. Yeah. So um, I did some hunting around and um, uh, I thought, well, you know, they're citing this, this uh, licensing. Uh, text from the Visual Pinball Code archive. So I went hunting and I found the updated licensing agreement as per the SourceForge um, code. So I wonder if you might, uh, I don't know if you have that available to bring up on screen, Chris. But, SourceForge, uh, which one? That's the one that with the special Line 29, I believe, correct? That's the, the the magical Line 29. That's the one. Here we go. So if you can Let me control highlight plus uh, that. Line 29 here. It's it right says... There. Redistributions may not be sold, nor may they be used in a commercial product or activity. So if you're reading that, you can pretty much draw some broad conclusions that, well, hang on, isn't Act Games a commercial product? Uh, how could how, how could then VP be used in a commercial product? But this is uh, basically the process. same thing. That, I mean, probably why people questioned it. This is the same kind of argument that Zen is using against in their ambulance right that's well that's that's exactly right so you know i think this is the reason why this discussion happened in the first place and you know it's a pretty short um license um text thing as a lot of open source um license texts are um but that's the essentially the addendum to the standard uh, gpl3 licensing rules that um are dictated by this particular product um so this i think is where the discussions stem from but then if you um go and do some digging around you'll find that there's actually a bit of a precedent with um using visual pinball in a commercial setting and that was back well it was about 2005 i think chris where they were um doing this product called um it was called ultracade ultracade so watch this jared um, there it is there it is. So this was a bit hard to find. This was actually linked off the Wikipedia article about Visual Pinball in the footnotes. Um, and what you're seeing here on screen is from the Google's Wayback Machine or the uh, Internet Archive's Wayback Machine. So this post is scanning, uh, spanning between 2005 to 2016, um, as you'll see from the timeline. Now, uh, from a historical perspective, around 2005, um, the, the guy here, David R. Foley, um, approached Randy Davis, who is the creator of Visual Pinball, to actually license um, Visual Pinball for a commercial platform, being the Ultracade. And the whole idea behind the Ultracade was they were going to work with Visual Pinball um, to put 12 Belly Williams tables um, onto this product and then sell it as a commercial pinball cabinet. This was way back in 2005. So that's an interesting uh, bit of 
uh, digging because it suggests that you know what at games have done here is they've just done exactly the same as um uh, this guy did and said hey look we'd like to actually use this um commercially how much do you want and the guy said well i would like this much and they've probably just gone okay here you go thanks very much and that's the end of the discussion really yeah um so i was originally wondering as well if this was legit but it does pay to do your research and i think in this case it's probably totally above board from what i've seen um so i maybe mean call it basically boss. we have to assume it is uh until proven yeah. differently because that's not that's not for us to determine no. and really not for <laughs> anyone to determine it's 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 very much a by commercial arrangement only and that's not something we're privy to nor should we be in right. fact, nor should the community be because it's a business deal. So, right. you know, I think um, Bill from the forum, um, he he was rightful to actually say um, in, in the, the chat um, message there in the, in the conversation, it's like, there's no ill will done. Licenses have been paid. Everything is above board. And you really do just need to take their word for it that everything is good because um, it is. And, you know, I, I kind of get why the the visual pinball community would be a little scared by this mm. because as it stands the basically just call it stern now but uh, yeah for the entire time of visual pinball you know going back as far as when i was into it which was 2001 2002 uh basically the, 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 the manufacturers the manufacturers <laughs> looked the other direction you yeah. know they, 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 there's a fair bit of copyright infringement happening in there right um which the manufacturers are okay with until they're not right and right. and basically with stern the the general consensus the idea was hey so long as you wait three years from the time that we make and are selling this pin if you wait three years and then you post the roms and make the tables we're we're good because we're no longer yeah. selling the table anymore um yeah, that basically, was if it's off the production line we're happy right right so that's mm -hmm. why i say that was the the manufacturers just kind of do, 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 look in the other way because the community wasn't necessarily hurting their sales. No. If anything, they were keeping pinball spirit alive. Um, That's right. They're actually doing a service to the industry. Right. So if all of a sudden a full size digital cab at a really inexpensive price point that's going to get a whole lot more people on one of these things than a six thousand dollar unit uh that's going to potentially pucker the sphincters of stern who then might go wait a second and then all of a sudden actually come hammering down on the mm. visual pinball community which is in essence what happened to the main community uh that was yeah. posting all the roms and all of a sudden eyeballs focused on them and went yeah we're gonna cease and desist you <laughs> yeah every one of you basically right yeah. Right, then that, um, you know, they, I can really understand that, as you say, Chris. Like they, they don't want that to happen. That would just destroy the community. Um, so, you know, and making original games like you've seen come up, like the Leprechaun King and Pizza Time, that that's not an easy endeavor. Uh, that takes a lot of effort. Um, so, you know, you, losing three quarters of the library um, through a cease and desist would be terrible for vpx yeah so yeah yeah i can imagine people are, are really holding like at the at the mention of commercial and vpx they're, they're probably holding out games pretty close to the fire to make sure that you know they're held accountable but i think from what i can see no ill will is happening here um it is because they're controlling the way you can actually manage and install things and it's all through their ecosystem they can actually control all the licensing particulars so as a consumer you don't need to worry about it so you've got these this option you've got a cabinet this is where the, the portion of the show where people might hate us uh, <laughs> mm. um yeah. oh well oh well <laughs> opinions right uh everyone's got one mm. um, we have them we have them so here you've got and and this is I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have, couch this by saying you personally, Jared. Right. Because that's I'm not gonna put the theoretical. If you're this kind of gamer, you've got no. one option where you're going to have well over 100 
uh, pinball tables available to you to play natively on your machine. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this other one that's going to have 10. Mm -hmm. Where do you, where do you land? Are you happy with, you can... with a whole mess of Zachariah and Gottlieb tables? Or would you be happier with some 10 Zen originals? Or would you be happy with uh, 10 Belly Williams? That's a really tricky question. Now, I've got, I've got all of these tables all in Steam. As do I. Uh, as, as we both do. So it really does come down to form factor product inclusions etc now for a similar price i can get both cabinets you'd say that's correct hey chris what do you mean about, for, similar... for a similar for a similar price i can get the hardware yes so, so based on that at games you're gonna go the at games route mm -hmm. because you can connect your pc to it and play you know with with a Less experience probably than you could play, um, like on the at uh, on the um, arcade one up cabinets, but mm -hmm. still, it's a bigger screen, um, and you know there are hints that um, the guys at that games are going to be like doing this connected ecosystem thing. So you know, if I was a betting man, I'd probably say that at games has the hardware and a price point that you know putting my extensibility hat on that in the future you know your future is unwritten but it all seems to be leaning towards the community being able to make the zen experience work pretty well on it um whether officially or not i, I think that's what's going to be happening with this product okay Mm. So that's and, I mean, look at chalk, the prices. chalk one up for Jared. Uh, um, well, I just look at the price. Like if I was going to have to spend one thousand three hundred dollars on a cabinet, mm -hmm. I'd spend it on the at game ones mm -hmm. because I buy it once and I can potentially extend its life and its usability um, by um, putting other games on and connecting my PC to it to literally play anything. So okay. Yeah. So there's there's uh, there's Jared's perspective on uh, on why he would choose the Legends Pinball over either of the, uh, at, uh, either the arcade one-up one cabs. My perspective. I have this. <laughs> I have my PC with all these games. And I can rotate my monitor into horizontal. I've got a second monitor for my screen, for my back glass right here. Um, so I can play these things that way. Um, mm. it's already, I'm already configured that way. Would I buy a PC and have it right next to the at games machine, um, to do, and then to plug in? Well, mm -hmm. my question is, how are you going to get that second monitor running? Uh, I assume you're going to have to crack open the back of the cabinet and hack into that second monitor with another HDMI. Um, I've got a feeling that no, again, the future has not been written, mm -hmm. but I think that um, I'm talking about with not... what you're purchasing right now. Right now, yeah, yeah. Th there's no way of getting that second monitor working with the current uh, hardware that's inside that machine. Correct. Um, yeah. There's also no way of getting it to react to Rumble or Accelerometer for Correct. any of the Zen games. I that's can do that. True, yeah. I can do that on my cabinet. So I've already mm. got that aspect of things covered. So to mm -hmm. me, it comes around to then, again, you're, you are dealing with form factor of, of the two cabs, um, a three-quarter size versus a virtually full-size Nearly full-size, yeah. Um, and then what games are being included on it. If I'm looking exclusively at the Bally Williams stuff, so the, the Attack from Mars table, I will take that every single time over the 100 and... 20 some tables that are going to be available on at games reason mm. being how often do you play zachary pinball or pinball arcade i don't play pinball arcade at all particularly the godly ones yeah. and i don't play um the zachary pinball uh, titles that much because i'm missing some of the collection 
Um, I don't have un- unlock keys for them, and I tend not to gravitate to them. Yeah, the only ones that I don't have uh, unlocked for me are the deluxe tables. Um, but the amount of times I open up Zacharia, just like me sitting down and going, hey, yeah, I feel, like playing, play I feel like playing Zacharia Pinball. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen. The only time no. I ever open up Pinball Arcade is either to compare it to uh, what has been Zen has done <laughs> on a Bally Williams table, or the occasional time where I'm like, man, I really want to play Adam's Family. <laughs> And so then I'll mm. then I'll open that up, but it's we're talking slim the amount of times I do that. Um, yes, and I jokingly said to Jared one time, I said, "Look, I would rather have three or four really high quality Transformer toys than the entire run of GoBots." Um, yeah, <laughs> and look, you know, there is like I, I've the only reason why I'm making my claim yeah. about what I choose is because of the information they're releasing about this open and connected pinball platform stuff. Mm-hmm. Like to me as a betting man, I think that with that and even if you had to pay two to three hundred dollars to get a special board that just opens up everything and, you know, for example, turns the the sensors and the um the haptic feedback that's already in the cabinet it, it, and makes it accessible to um you know, games on Steam like FX3, like, um, you know, Pinball Wicked, for example. You know, as a betting man, I'm looking at that going, that's worth the risk um, to, to have that in the future. Um, and th- like the stuff that At Games announces and stuff like that, from what I've seen in the community, they follow through on it. So this isn't just one of those vaporware things that they're announcing it's actually something they've got planned out so from my perspective given the exchange rate and the cost and everything like that i don't have the luxury of just buying one belly williams cabinet from um, arcade one up and being satisfied with that Mm -hmm. when i have all those tables in steam and it's it's the difference isn't it right it's it's the difference between what is essentially an impulse buy and something you really have to think about Right, with, with money on on hand, and, and, and that's truth the be only told, why I'm like that. I'm going to still be very curious <clears throat> uh, to put hands on the arcade one up cab and see for myself how it feels, mm. because if the experience is less than me playing on that on my PC, that will be very disappointing. Um, yeah, from what I can tell, the experience is supposed to be better. Mm. And that's what I'm hoping for is that with those solenoids popping and with that custom view angle on it and having the DMD where it belongs, I'm really, and you know, with the accelerometers and everything, I, I'm really hoping for that premium experience. That really immersive pinball experience. And look, I, I'll put on record saying that I also hope for this as well Yeah. with this product. Like the Arcade 1UP product is... Like you put all of the positives that At Games has from what the hardware is and what they're trying to do with the platform, and you put that like in the same sort of line as like all the things on the arcade one up line. And the only real differentiating differentiating point between those two products for me is the experience. And that's really what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. That's what your money is buying on these things. How does it feel when you walk up to it? And you want to actually interact with the product and yeah. play it. Now, so if, if we're talking you're now, buying experience really is what you're buying with these two products, right? Now, if we're talking about the Zen Originals, the Star Wars cab or the Marvel cab, mm-hmm. um, I'm not happy with the tables that are on this Star Wars cab. No, they, I'm not that's... happy with the table selection at all. Um, those are yeah. literally some of my least played Zen tables out there. I play those almost yeah. as much as I play. Zachariah Pinball. So, yeah. If if I'm deciding between Star Wars and at games, yeah, I'll pay for to skin that cabinet into a Star Wars form factor, um, which is the what I like about the arcade one-up machine. And mm, it looks good. It looks good. And then I'll deal with the games that are that I can you know get on that. Um, the Marvel cab, I like a lot of those. I like a lot of those a lot. Um, mm. And Marvel I had a lot of fun with would look cool. Iron Man the other day. Like I'd started like experimenting with a few of the Marvel tables just to sort of see. Yeah. And 
there, there's a lot of good stuff on Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, Iron I, Man is not on that cab. <laughs> no, but I, well, sorry, Spider Man, I think. Spider Man, the other one. Yeah. yeah, like that's, it, it's, you, you need to read the rules. As I said in a couple episodes ago, you need to understand how to play the tables. Once you do, you can have a lot of fun on them. Like yeah. there, there's um, nothing wrong with those tables. So the Marvel cab would be, there's where I'm like, ooh, again, if the experience is what I'm hoping for, I think that would be the tipping factor for me. Mm. Um, See, Marvel, Marvel with all of the physics in place, yeah, um, count me in. Like yeah. that would change it really, really quite a lot. Um, I do like the smaller form factor, so long as I'm not crouched over and leaning over. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, because Mel's not exactly short, from what I understand. And, and truth be told, so this cabinet here is standard pinball height, because um, mm. I measured it to my tables that I have outside in the garage. Um, mm. If even if this was down two inches, um, which I have a feeling that's what it's going to be, that's still mm. more than playable. Um, yeah, it, it, you're not. In, it, basically, it's instead of having your hands up high with you, your arms are extended down a little bit lower, but you can still be, mm. you know, straight up and down. Um, now, if if I felt like gutting the at games, and or if my purpose of of buying, let's say, the arcade one up one was to gut mm. it and put my own PC in, then no way, get the at games. There's no reason to to do that to no. an arcade one up cab. Um, no, and if it's that, really not. yeah, and and if that was just playing my intention in general, that I'm using this purely for the monitor and the a shell the, as a shell and I'm going to slap a PC inside of this thing, then I do think the Out Games is the uh, the better option there. Mm-hmm. Yep. At it's least it makes more sense. What you need. Yes. It's, it's just got more of what you need um, up front in it yeah. to actually mod it. Yeah. So, I don't know, folks. What do you think? Are we are we making sense? Or, mm. or you know... <laughs> we've, we've been getting a lot of messages about how we've been... We're rather biased and... I'm yeah. trying to explain where that bias comes from. Um, yeah. For me, it comes down to what I actually play. Uh, that's the key, the key number one factor. Um, yeah. And for me, it's just literally guessing because I have no real way of touching any of these products down here in Australia. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's more about what I see online. Right. And, and what I can... I mean, now I've actually touched an arcade one-up cabinet you know, in the flesh. I know what the buttons feel like, the controls feel like. But, you know, who knows if we'll even see the pinball cabinet down here. The suggestions that we are. I don't think it's going to be until at least quarter one, at least, over here. Um, and they may not even do it. They may hold it over till next Christmas. Who knows? You know, yeah. and do wave two. I mean, that's a distinct possibility. Um, so... my, my plea for at games at the moment, but my plea also goes out to, to Arcade 1-Up. Quit marketing just solely to the person that's going to walk by it in the store, the casual fan that's going to read some bullet points and go, oh, oh yeah. Give us hardcore people the information that we want. We want to know what is the actual height of mm, the dimensions. The, yeah, you know, me standing there, what is floor to top of the play field? What is that height? Um, you know, how is the store going to work for purchasing these these tables? Uh, I don't know. There's, there's all manner. You know, we were talking about last time how we just want to see DMD or, or, or second monitor and playfield interacting at the same time, so yes. that we can under because there's things that we can key into and pick up on that we want to know. You know, what are the in terms of with at games? You know, what is the ability to just only purely show the score up on the on the monitor, or is it yeah. always going to be baked into to the back glass and you can just like magnify it or something like that? I don't know. These are these are the questions that we need real answers to, and we need them to be answered with video. Like that is, or video or clear pictures with like measurements and, and heights and stuff. And it's literally just talk to one of us. That, and I'm saying just me or Jared. I'm talking to you, any of these Anyone content in, creators that are into digital pinball, yeah. um, because they all we all have the same questions. And we're not getting the answers. <laughs> Which is why you're getting such wild and varied opinions on the internet. Because when you don't supply hard facts and information, people speculate. So if you don't want that out there, don't give us the fodder to speculate. Actually give us information. And we won't do it. 
Right? Easy peasy. Sounds good to me. Please and thank you. <laughs> that doesn't seem so hard. I don't know why they're they're using content providers and, and like content affiliates to do their marketing for them at games. That's the thing I don't understand. And you know, to be fair, essentially they're getting Mel to do the same thing for um Arcade One Up as well. Yes. But the difference with the content we've seen from Mel versus At Games is that it's actually content and he's actually playing the product as you would play it in your home. And that is the big difference. The like Arcade One Up from that perspective are well in front of At Games with their ability to communicate the value of the product. Right. Um, well in front. And At Games, honestly, they need to catch up and they need to do it fast and they need to do it officially. Yeah. So mm. there's our uh, the more you know. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right. Well, we've been on a roll here, Jared. We've uh, managed to produce what is this? Three weeks in a row? Four weeks in a row of uh, shows? I've lost count. <laughs> I really don't know anymore. It all just blurs into one. It's so weird doing like like quick fire shows like this. You know, we literally <laughs> said, "Hey, so long as there's information, we'll have a show." And uh, information here keeps on dropping. So. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, then you'll be notified immediately. Uh, check out our socials. There, there, there's mine, there's Jared's, and uh, there's the shows. Uh, make sure you log in and, and uh, uh, sign up for that way. And beyond that, w- hey, we're going to see you when we see you. And yeah. the kind of things that uh, we will be talking about is Jared's favorite. Stuff and things. There you go, folks. All right, until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.